from IBM TV World Headquarters in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and from Seattle, Washington, we present the Chess Channel on IBM TV. Hi, I'm your host, Nick Palavita, and along with co-host, Kim Calhoun. Hello, everyone. We have two very special guests from the Seattle area, Elliot Neff, and our super special guest, the former world woman chess champion, Susan Polgar. Susan, welcome to the show. My pleasure, hi. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for oh having my us. goodness, it's such an honor to meet you. You know, yeah. I, I work with all of these chess geeks, right? And you're the first female I've been able to meet, so. <laughs> <laughs> hi. I don't play chess, but I'm so interested in hearing your story. Yes, and you and you have a really yes, good wow. story for people that uh, need to know, and certainly our audience will not need to know a little bit more about you and how'd you get started and where where did you come from? How'd you get started in playing chess? What happened? Exactly. Well, I was just four years old when I accidentally discovered this beautiful game back in Budapest, Hungary, which is my hometown, and uh, my father introduced me to the game. I fell in love with it and uh, started learning, eventually competing, going to clubs. And uh, well, many, many years later, here I am uh, still loving the game. Right. Wow. And, you, and you became the woman's world champion. And of course, you had to beat a lot of guys also throughout your career in playing chess. Um, did they get a little upset when uh, you came and you kind of like crushed them? <laughs> yeah, definitely, especially in the early stages when I was really young and they were not used to seeing a girl play chess, especially a girl play chess well, a girl, the boys or the men. And uh, so the first decade of uh, me being in the chess world was especially difficult, uh, like mm -hmm. literally on an everyday basis. It was like, you know, a psychological drama ongoing, you know, that the eight many guys didn't even want to play with a girl because right. they had no respect for no credit to the girl, that it would be even a challenge, and even worse, when they did and they lost, you know, the, the, there was a lot of uh, fun making of them among, among their peers, and they didn't like that. So it was a very tough psychological situation, uh, not just for me, but I assume for a lot of guys too. And I'm proud to say that uh, I got them used to it, to lose <laughs> to girls. And uh, because of my example later, my sisters and as well as other women, uh, we came a long way. And now it's not such a huge surprise or, or unusual occurrence that a girl, a woman would beat a guy. Happens every day nowadays in chess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's no longer like, you know, headline news. <laughs> Yes, so. and, and and you became the women's world champion. Tell me, the first time you won the women's world championship, who did you play to win the women's world championship? So first, uh, I won in the rapid, which means uh, it was uh, I think game thirty at the time, and uh, so the whole game each side has thirty minutes, and then I won the blitz. So it was not like a match, but it was uh, each country could send a representative and. Uh, basically sent a few special VIP invites and uh, it was just a long tournament and whoever scores the most points. So that was the first one. And then the second one was actually an all play all. There were 28 participants. So I had to play all mm -hmm. 27 other top players, uh, including Maya Chikurdanidze or my sisters, uh, mm -hmm. who were also, also top level chess players and of course many others. And uh, I, I, I scored the, the most points there as well. And uh, that's how I won my first uh, two titles. And of course, I won a junior title earlier, world title as well earlier. And then finally, the classical chess, the really slow time control. Uh, there I had to defeat uh, first uh, in the semifinals, the former world champion, uh, Georgian Maya Chibordanidze. And in the final, I uh, dethroned the then world champion uh, Chinese Xie Jun. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so you have to beat people from all over the world. Don't you get nervous as you head toward the later game saying, oh, what happens if I blow it? Uh, do you ever get nervous when you're playing? Well, that's one of the most important skills for a top level athlete, whether chess or other sports, I think, is how you handle your nerves. And there are so many talented and skillful players out there in chess. And uh, 
I think that is the difference, uh, how one is able to handle their nerves in those tense situations when everything is on the line. Mm -hmm. While a lot of people, when they would play just in their local club, they would handle that very same position, same situation perfectly well. But being under the pressure when there is everything to gain or lose, they just cannot perform their very best. And uh, well, I've been, I guess, uh, well, they're well trained on one hand, but fortunate also that on the most part, I was able to perform my best when it mattered. Basically, mm -hmm. so your focus is essential. Absolutely, time, focus right? is essential, and, and and being able to exclude all the distractions, all the outside thoughts as of what happens if I win this, mm -hmm. right? And yes. a lot of things may happen uh, versus what happens if I don't, and and being able to focus at the task at hand, exactly. which is the current position, one position at a time, one move at a time, and that's what I'm trying to instill in my students today when I teach chess that uh, you need to focus on, on problem solving in front of you yeah. and not during the game, during the, the competition, you need to really try to forget as much as possible how important this particular game or competition may or may not be. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is, and then you came to the United States and you got involved in collegiate chess. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that all took place. Yeah, I, I live basically about half my life now in the United States. And uh, first, uh, I was still a competitive player. When I won my last world championship title in 1996, I was already uh, residing in New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I opened my chess center there in New York City that I ran for over a decade. Then uh, I also founded the Susan Bogar Foundation, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, along all, all of these things happening, uh, in 2007, uh, I got recruited to Texas Tech University, where I founded SPICE. And uh, the whole idea of giving opportunities to young people in chess, uh, combining their education, higher education, with their chess education. And uh, there were very few such opportunities back in those days. And I'm proud to say that the fact that SPICE uh, was born, it inspired a number of other universities to, to follow our footsteps and uh, give more opportunities, more scholarship opportunities to chess players and, and combining their education and uh, with that represent their universities as well. Yeah, and tell us a little bit more about SPICE. Yeah, we want to know more about SPICE. What is SPICE? What, yeah, let's let's spell this out for the community who does not right. understand this. Right. Yeah, well, SPI stands for actually Susan Polgar Institute for Chess Excellence. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah, so uh, it, it really focuses on a number of things. So the key focus, obviously, is collegiate chess. So currently already for the eighth year, we are at uh, Webster University, a wonderful partnership we're having. So we're recruiting chess players of various levels with various levels of scholarship, depending on their chess levels and other criteria. And uh, we are uh, focusing in giving them an opportunity in excelling in not only chess, but obviously in their choice of major that they want to you know, got an education and mm -hmm. degree in, and it's a very wide range. I, I'm always being asked, uh, what are your students studying? And uh, it really ranges from uh, finance, economy, to psychology, biology, uh, accounting, uh, management, you name it. It's, it's really very diverse. But obviously what brings everybody together in the SPICE program is chess, the love of chess. And uh, for, of course, uh, many of them, they are pretty high level chess players already that would like to get even higher. And uh, one of uh, our, our most famous uh, students uh, have been, alum have been Wesley So, yeah. who, who yeah. came to our program when he was barely uh, in the top 100, like 1999, I mean, number 1999 or so in the world. And uh, two and a half years later, when he decided to go pro, he, he was a top 10 player in the world and soon after reached even number two in the world. So And now 
world champion porch. And now <laughs> he, he very recently won the Fisher Random Style World yeah. Chess Championship. So I think it's it's really the doors that we're open to so many chess players. Uh, it's a great opportunity not just for them, but also for the university to get the exposure to uh, our successes together. That I think it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, oh, tell, tell us a little bit more about the program at Webster University. I've been following it for years. Tell us about uh, how's Webster doing. Webster is doing great. We have been number one ranked for now the eighth year in a row. We have won the last seven consecutive Pan American Intercollegiate Championships, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Spice has won seven consecutive Final Four Championships as well, two for Texas Tech and then uh, five at uh, Webster University. So we've been uh, doing very, very well, as well as our students have won more national and world titles than all of the other uh, college programs combined in the last seven years at Webster University. So I'm really, really proud of the successes of our students in chess, but I'd like to share also a very uh, heartwarming story. That's one of my favorites. Uh, Webster University has been hosting now for the past seven years uh, in collaboration with the Susan Polgar Foundation, the Susan Polgar Foundation Girls Invitational Championship. It's an event that brings together girls from all parts of the United States as well as the American continent, one pretty much one representative per country or state. And uh, one of the representatives that came from Colombia uh, about, uh, I think, six years ago now, who came to represent her country at that event, won the championship, and with that, a full scholarship to Webster University. The catch was that uh, at that time, when she won the championship and the scholarship, I could only communicate with the winner in Spanish. Her English pretty much ended with high and by at that point. <laughs> Maybe thank you for doing it as well. Mm -hmm. So long story short, even though she won the scholarship, she could not exercise it immediately, even though she just finished high school and by age she was ready to start college. Uh, so anyway, she took a year off to learn English from scratch. And wow. uh, she came back indeed a year later to exercise her scholarship. Wow. And uh, fast forward, four years later, she graduated in computational biology with summa cum laude. Oh, yeah, that's wow. Yep. That in the meantime, awesome. the, the summer before she graduated, she had an internship at Princeton University. Really? Wow. And uh, today, she is uh, working at Harvard University mm -hmm. in a research program. Wow. So it's such an amazing fairy tale story coming yeah. from a Columbia single parent mm -hmm. country, yeah. no means, and through chess. Even though she's not yeah. a particularly strong chess player, she's a decent <clears throat> chess player, maybe 2000, 2100 sure. level. Mm -hmm. But despite her extraordinary chess successes, through chess, she gained a scholarship. Through the scholarship, she opened the door for herself yeah. and changed really the future of her family. That's just awesome. And you know, speaking of that, you know, you are working with the highest level chess players in the US and the world champion levels. And now you're talking about the impact it has for those who may not be at that level. You're out here in Seattle, and there's a lot of social impact opportunities, you know, through the game of chess. Can you speak a little bit to what you're doing here in Seattle and the different things that you see? how chess is a vehicle for social impact. Absolutely, and, and that's the beauty of it, that really chess has so many different uh, ways to look at it, right? It's obviously a fun game that you can play at home in a family bonding environment. You can make friends anywhere you travel. Yeah. You can compete, as yeah. we talked about, the successes we, we talked about. But even just uh, building life skills, which uh, of course uh, yeah. Chess for Life is doing a yeah. fantastic job of. And also my foundation, the Susan Bogart Foundation, that's what we're about, really, to using chess as a tool yes. to open doors in life. And uh, I'm very thankful to the game of chess because it opened a lot of doors to me. It uh, got, gave me the opportunity to see the world, yeah. to travel around mm -hmm. the world uh, with the excuse of chess tournaments, yeah. right? Obviously, 
adjust tournaments. I'm used to be mostly busy focusing on my games, but nevertheless, I got to see uh, different sites and learn about the, the, the history and, and the culture of the different places yeah. I visited. I made a, a lot of friends around the, my travels. It's, chess can really just build so many skills. It's, it's mm -hmm. really just so fantastic. And uh, it, it's a lot more than a sport or a game. And mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. what a lot of people miss. And yeah. that's why I think uh, organizations like my foundation or your Chess for Life is so important. Yeah. yeah, and it's played internationally, which is the thing that we like at IBM TV because we broadcast internationally and uh, the chess players play internationally. Uh, but I also noticed you, you wrote a book in this area. So could you tell us a little about, do you have a copy of the book or anything? Yeah, uh, actually, I got to give to Elliot uh, my latest book. mine now. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, behind me is a bunch of chess books, but I never yeah, tell I'm my uh, people that. This yeah, is the very first one which right. is checkmate basically and it's very systematical it uh, breaks it down piece by piece and then uh, the book two focuses on winning materials mm -hmm. and book three which is really unique i think and is something that has been neglected in uh, in teaching chess is how to defend right because you all like to win capture opponent's pieces give checkmate but it's equally important to think from the other side what does my opponent want to do and that's another life skill, I think. It's really important uh, not, to, not to forget that it's not a solitaire game. Just like in life, most things we do, yeah. there is a, a challenge in front of us, there is another side that may have opposite interest. And, and, that uh, might make moves you didn't expect. Exactly, <laughs> and, and how to handle that. And focusing on the defensive skills, which mastering defense uh, focuses on, is a really, I'll give yeah. it back to you, Thank since you. it's yours. <laughs> wow. uh, it, it focuses on, so uh, it's a very systematical uh, book series that uh, is kind of the summary of, uh, I guess, the 40 plus years that I've been teaching chess, not just playing chess. It's a summary of what I think is the right way to teach chess. It's actually called Learn Chess the Right Way. Uh, so Jim, I, there's still hope for you. You know? <laughs> so, hey, so can I can I ask for a copy of one or two of your books? Yes, of course. Elliot, um, Elliot and I are meeting That's in Miami right. next Good week. Miami. So maybe right. um, I can get a copy from you for, through right. him if you've got yeah. any there. Yeah. Yes, I'll have that another copy for him. Yes. We'll make right. sure that happens. So, okay. they, so I am the minority in this organization right now. Everybody plays chess. I'm waiting until our first event, January 20th, so that I'm learning in the event, so that it's real. Um, but I'm excited about it. I'm reading the books. I, I read Elliot's book. I'll read your book. Because there's a lot of things in the book that teaches me about um what's what's going on so i'm, I'm so thank you very much but I'm, I'm curious okay so you're in this world that's generally owned by men and i guess it's now being taken over by women yay and you you've shown that you can just top it now but it kind of merges. I don't think that there's a lot of, um, you know, back probably when you started, there was a big difference, but do you see where it's kind of merging a little bit more now? Yes, we came a long way because as I mentioned earlier, when I was a, a little girl, there were very few women playing. There were very few good women players. Oh. And I made it my mission when I was a young girl that to break that gender barrier because I didn't understand why is that there were no women who were grandmasters at all, not right. a single one. Uh, even international master level were less than a handful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just didn't understand why not. And I kept being told that it's impossible. <laughs> and of course, that was something that just fueled my motivation. Right. And challenge you. <laughs> Right. It's and impossible until it's done, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it just happened to be that uh, I was the one that had to break those barriers down. And uh, in 1991, January 1991, I finally was the first woman 
to accomplish all the requirements uh, through the traditional way like guides have to accomplish to become a grandmaster and earn the title and i'm proud to say that after my example they women realized that oh if susan did it then it's not impossible and today there are a few dozen other women who have now uh, followed my uh, footsteps, including my uh, sister Judith, she was uh, one of the next ones right after me, still the same year, December 1991, who also became a grandmaster. Yeah, so and here, here, here's, a here's an interesting... rivalry going on here. Do you guys play each other? We used to play. Uh, at this point, we are, of course, both have retired from competitive play long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I used to train her. I'm the eldest of the three sisters, but uh, then she grew up and eventually we became teammates. We won uh, Olympic gold medals together in 1988, defeating the great Soviet Union and being the first country representing Hungary at the time. Uh, winning uh, over the Soviet Union, who has won all the men's chess Olympiads up to that point in 1988, which we repeated in the following chess Olympiad. And imagine it was three sisters in the same team, yeah. represent wow. the country. Right. Yeah, and that's not in the women's championship. That was in the women's oh, championship. Yes. Oh, that was in the women's championship. Right. The right. Open. right. I bet that was a handful in your house. That's kind of like having the Mannings football team right all the brothers playing football that's Is exactly that right everybody knows in the world. I'll tell you what elliot girls are more competitive than boys the polgar sisters everybody knows about them and here's an interesting stat yeah. there's 2153 billionaires in the world approximately there's only 1600 chess grandmasters in the world the interesting stat is this. It's easier to become a billionaire than becoming a chess grandmaster. <laughs> That's the reality of life. Okay? <laughs> so the thing is, for those who think you'd be becoming a grandmaster, do something easy. Become a billionaire. It's easy. <laughs> <Just remember that. laughs> so, so, That's what she tells everyone on Money Masters. You know, do something <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, 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 it's like that. that's how tough it is. Yes. It's, uh, you know, my my daughter is seven years old right now, and we have a lot of young ladies, young girls who come into chess and they enjoy the social aspect. Uh, what would you say to them in terms of the benefits of pursuing chess beyond just a casual game? Like, would you recommend they go into competition? Why, if they're asking you that, what would you say to? What are the benefits of pursuing that path since it's easier to be a billionaire? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously it has to be everyone's personal choice. First yeah. of all, they need to have the passion for the game. So if yeah. somebody really wants to be a professional player or really taking it serious, do they have to have the passion for yes. it? But if they do, if yes. they do, I think it's really important that everybody will try to find in life something they are passionate about and something they enjoy doing yeah. and, and then then it will not feel like oh i need to wake up for work you know right. no another day of challenge another day of fun yeah. right so that that's where it starts but i mean chess i think is a, a great game because it's a, generally a very fair game and uh, one can be very much in control yeah. of what one does compared to many other things you know like in a team sport you know it, it depends on your teammates it depends in some sports on the weather it, it can depend on some other sports on the judges uh, that are necessarily objective you know like in figure skating yes. gymnastics it may be yeah. great but the judges don't feel like it yes. it's not yes. so objective right i mean so chess is relatively an objective sport yeah. compared mm -hmm. to some others and uh, you know the work you put in, the results you get out. Typically. Yes. So, right. so in that sense, it gives you a lot of control and a lot of satisfaction. It's a beautiful game. You can be creative. You can be a scientist. You can be a competitor, all at the same time. And uh, through chess, as I mentioned earlier, I gained a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I felt uh, not just in accomplishments, but through the game through the accomplishments. I made a lot of friends. I got to see places. I uh, I got to do something I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. the beauty of the game. I've seen the doors open for 
if you start thinking of people who have come from a disadvantaged background, chess can be a vehicle that does not cost much to mm -hmm. utilize. You can even make your own chess board if you need to. And yet you can do it anywhere. And when competitions occur and opportunities come, just like the story of the Queen of Katwe, right? Mm -hmm. The Disney movie about Fiona Matesi, who's now at college in this area in the greater Seattle region, you know, it can open doors. Mm -hmm. And at the same right. time, develop those abilities to think ahead, to process, to be strategic, develop patience, so many, so many benefits, which mm -hmm. is why I appreciate what you said too about find your passion. You right. know, here at Hawaii for 16 years, I've not had a job. And it's been a joy to bring these benefits to, to many people in the community from three-year-old and on up. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, no, Elliot, wait, time out. 22 months. I saw a video <laughs> of a 22-month-old reach over, shake hands with someone in an attempt to play speed chess. 22 yes, months. Yes, a video so, of that. <laughs> yep. My, well, what, this son, or it's is Elliot's a, child. Years old, sits down with his chessboard. I should share the clip uh, to others and holds out his hand, waiting to shake hands to begin the game. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as he proceeds to take the piece, <laughs> but he knows yeah. you have to shake hands first. But now I can play the pieces. But he's got that part down, and I love it because it just shows you're never too young or never too old to truly learn some really great skills in life, right? Some good social yeah. um, applications, which I believe what I have gained from working in this cult, as I call it, um, <laughs> but this community of chess uh, community is that you guys really strive good social etiquette, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Yeah. And um, and now I am seeing that it's not gender specific, right? It, it, you know, when I grew up, it was always the boys game. And mm -hmm. um, and I see that it's not a gender specific game that girls can play it and they can not only play it, but they can, you know, kick butt at it. They can achieve and, and go far with it like you have. If you, um, what was the greatest moment that you can recall in your chest plane, like that first wow moment when you, well, when it the, really very first, you. the first one probably had to be when I was just four years old and I entered in the Budapest uh, Elementary School Girl Championship and I won all my games 10 out of 10. Wow. And wow. everybody was so amazed, you know. <laughs> In those days, for me, as a four-year-old, it was, okay, I just played 10 games and I won all, but it, it wasn't anything, I didn't comprehend it, obviously, at the time yet, that it's anything very spectacular, but all the media and the chess experts and uh, the other competitors, they were all like, wow, what, what just happened, you know? So that obviously was the first uh, awakening moment. That's Did you beat, wow. beat the guys also back then? Were there, there guys in there too? That particular championship was like basically under 11 year old girls yes. in the city of Budapest, the capital mm -hmm. of Hungary. But right. then I started to play against guys. That was shortly after that, that was another cute story. I was visiting at my mother's uh, hometown uh, when I was still like four, four and a half years old. And uh, in the town, it was very normal that in the main square, one of the main squares, they were playing, guys were playing chess for some small stakes. And so we went by and uh, my father asked if, uh, would my daughter play? They said, oh no, they only play for stakes here. So anyway, negotiations started and we agreed that we'll play f for a bar of chocolate. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So anyway, I, we played, I won, I beat the guy, the guy started running. So I thought he's trying to run away and not give the chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I sat and started running after him, what's going on? Where is my chocolate? And it turned out, it turned out he was running to the grocery store to buy the chocolate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking about running, we are running out of time. And so the thing is, is there any last comments we need to have? Yes, Elliot. 
Did we, did we cover enough here about the, I really wanted to ensure we cover about the Susan Fulgar Foundation and what are you most excited about at this time? Yes. Well, I'm really excited about the foundation that we gave away around $5 million in scholarships uh, wow. since we started our events in 2003 uh, well. to young chess players, uh, most, the majority of the girls, also boys, and they opened a lot of doors for them. So we have also put chess for girls, especially on the back. So, Are, Susan, you know, Susan, is that five million in chess scholarships? It's scholarships for chess players at various universities, not wow. just. Wow. Yeah, I know. I understand that, but see, the the audience yeah, needs to know absolutely. today there are chess scholarships available, which is great out there. Yeah, okay. that's a lot of money. Where that's do you find money five scholarship. million dollars? I mean, that's you know, and mm -hmm. to give away. I mean, that's right. a lot of money. Well, it encourages, it encourages parents. You got to teach your kids how to play chess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we are we're spreading the word of all the different benefits chess uh, promotes right. and all the doors it can open, including, of, of course, university scholarships. Yeah, that's that's just wonderful because university is so expensive today to be able to get a chess scholarship. I mean, uh, all the kids should be encouraged to play because having a chance to get a scholarship is just absolutely amazing. That's changed. Uh, that's also now here in Seattle in uh, trying to help the community here and bringing a big event here also with potentially significant mm -hmm. university scholarships okay. at that event uh, for 2020. Right. Exactly. Okay. So fall 2020, we're excited for an event coming out this way. Okay. Uh, you need to promote chess in the communities, benefits for all ages. So thank you, Susan. Yeah, for when all right. 2020? When? When? When are you doing it? Looking to do it on the National Chess Day, October 10. It's yet to be 100% confirmed, but it's the plan, October 10, 2020. Okay. Okay. So get up here. Well, the thing is, um, we're, we're kind of running out of time, but we do want to thank our special guest, Susan Polgar, from uh, one of the Polgar sisters, very famous for being our special guest on the Chess Channel at IBM TV. And of course, Elliot Neff, who runs Chess for Life and Kim Calhoun. So we do want to thank you for all attending and thank you for watching the Chess Channel on IBM TV. Pleasure meeting you, Susan.